uh, I will speak not of uh, the present and the future of sustainable plastics in Ukraine, but it will be uh, the brief introduction. Because up to now, uh, there is no uh, general information about uh, the plastics and especially of bioplastics in Ukraine. So, but first of all, I would like to get acquainted with you. I'm a representative of two organizations. Uh, namely Institute of Macromolecular Chemistry and the uh, Plastic Welding Department of Paton Electric Welding Institute who, who are, as Andre said, friends of Plastic Project. And um, so I, I would like to uh, tell you shortly about uh, both organizations. So the Institute of Macromolecular Chemistry is a leading organization on uh, Polymers in Ukraine, uh, uh, it includes 250 staff uh, workers, let's say, uh, in seven departments, and uh, we have uh, 10 doctors of science, 73 uh, PhD uh, doc candidates of science, and uh, more than 50 young scientists and PhD students. And I would like to point that we have we have already three young uh, doctors who are uh, who had uh, defended their uh, thesis uh, under the joint supervision of uh, between Ukraine and France. And uh, I will say a lot about the institute and the topics of the institute, but I would like to say, in the direction of the conference, that we have already made the first step to bioplastics. Uh, it was a project uh, for of young scientists, uh, namely environmentally safe, natural degradable polymers as a way to maintain the purity of environment of Ukraine. Uh, it was supported by a grant of the president of Ukraine for gifted gifts. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, title, but it is direct translation from Ukrainian English. Okay, and the next. Uh, organization is uh, Paton Electric Welding Institute, but I, I will not say about uh, all the institute because it is very huge institute. Um, the uh, Paton Electric Welding Scientific and Technology Center that includes Paton Electric Welding Institute uh, has 3,500 uh, personnel. Uh, Paton Electric Welding Institute includes 1,350 uh, persons. And the Department of Plastic, uh, Plastic Welding Department has only 20. <laughs> so that is that we are. Uh, so um, here is our uh, department, the staff at work and the staff at leisure time. And uh, the um, Plastic welding depar department fields of interest are um, welding with a heated instrument, welding of plastics or polymers, uh, with he the heated instrument, thermal resistive welding, electrosonic welding, laser welding, research and development in the field of nature, structure uh, and complex properties of the welded joints, research and development in welding processing technologies and equipment, and starting from uh, 2014, we have started uh, welding of bioplastics. Uh, so let's return to the uh, bioplastics in Ukraine. So I would like to stop on the following outlines. Um, so I, I will speak about what is the problem with plastics and plastic waste, waste in Ukraine. Uh, basic problems and some obstacles with plastic recovery and recycling in Ukraine, the research and uh, development area, uh, the state support and the enterprises in Ukraine for bioplastics, and the perspectives which are at the top now in Ukraine, national information point, and who we are, but <laughs> I have already thought about that. So, um, what is the problem with plastics in Ukraine? Um, the production in general, the production of plastics in Ukraine decreases every year. But it is not because of the increase of production of bioplastics. It is because of some financial, let's say, crisis in, U 
in Europe and especially in Ukraine. So and now um, we have uh, from 60% up to 20% of Ukrainian production of plastics and from 40% up to 80% of import from 2007 to 2011. Such a big difference in percentages is because, again, as I said, there is no some general information. And uh, as I said, uh, we have negative index of plastics production, but positive index of goods production on, of pl from plastics, let's say. Um, for example, first quarter of 2014, production of rubber and plastic decreased for 10% compared to the same period on, uh, of 2013. Production of rubber decreased for 3.5% and production of plastic decreased more than 10%. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have 6,000 Lego dumps uh, which are situated more than on 9,000 uh, hectares uh, and we produce, Ukraine produce, uh, 52 million uh, meter, uh, cubic meters per year of waste. Uh, between these six thousands Lego dumps, um, sorry, I don't see. Um, five percent are overloaded, uh, 16 percent environmental and safe, eight percent. 35% uh, without any ecological passports and 8% non reclamated. Uh, additionally, to this, we have 30,000 uh, illegal dumps. Uh, that is because of uh, only 30,000 uh, of dust bins and 30 waste recycling enterprises in Ukraine. We have. We need 10 times more. And, for example, uh, uh, 200,000 tons of polythene bottles and bags per year and only 7% of them are recycled. Uh, for example, also the problems with waste, also for example, in 2011, 8% of domestic waste uh, were utilized, among them 4.2% uh, were burned and uh, combust at combustion place, plants and only less than four persons were recycled. And so what is the problem, of why we have such dangerous situation in Ukraine? First of all, we have Lego, as I said, Lego dams and illegal dams. And the um, quantity of illegal dams are much more than Lego dumps. I divided uh, these, let's say, uh, reasons on three points. Service obstacles, social obstacles, and financial obstacles. So let's start from service obstacles. Uh, that is, we can see these obstacles uh, on the street. So only 75% of people have a service of the domestic waste recovery. That's why we have 30,000 illegal dumps appear per year, mainly not in cities but in countryside. Mm -hmm. Only 185 human settlements have the divided domestic waste recovery. Only 8 human settlements have only 20 waste divided enterprises, 14 are built now. Only uh, 30,000 of dustbins, for example, comparing to 60 million of dustbins in Germany. And only 30 waste recycling enterprises, comparing to 500 waste recycling enterprises in Germany, we have in Ukraine. So 10 times less. The territory, two times more, let's say, approximately. So uh, also we have the social obstacles. Uh, that is the point where we have to start from us at the beginning. I mean that, um, first of all, there is no low regulation of plastic waste collecting and recycling. Uh, for example, uh, now, uh, penalty for littering in a forest of waste, plastic waste, 
is only 1751 euro. For example, comparing to Czech Republic, where, where the penalty is 1,200 euro. Uh, also, that is, let's say, uh, the problem of people. Kiev is provided with 70% of divided dutch bins for plastics, but most people threw their waste, not dividing, but in general, basket. And uh, that is uh, the statistical information, finally, uh, that Ukraine is provided with only 10% of uh, divided dutch bins uh, for plastics. And the finally, uh, financial obstacles uh, so, that is uh, why we have so many uh, plastics waste and not to, to, uh, utilized. Uh, recycling of one ton of plastic waste costs 10 euro approximately. Recovery uh, at Lego dump costs 8 euro. Recovery at illegal dump costs 3, 4 euro or even 3 you can throw out from the car. Uh, waste recycling enterprises need millions of investment into waste dividing equipment and no one wants to pay for free, let's say. And uh, one dustbin does costs 100, 150 euro and one waste dividing equipment costs approximately 60,000 euro. That's why uh, the waste companies, enterprises, waste uh, utilizing enterprises don't want to modify their lines. Also, we have some obstacles at the lower level. Uh, in 2013, Ukraine tried to make a step to bioplastics. Uh, the law of U U Ukraine in draft uh, on limiting the production use import and distribution in Ukraine of plastic bags and packaging uh, of one leverage has been represented in the Parliament of Ukraine on 20 February 2015. Uh, it was proposed to ban from manufacturer use importation and paid uh, or free distribution of plastic packages of one leverage with a volume of less than 35 liters uh, and the thickness of less than 25 microns on the territory of Ukraine except transition. Uh, except on transit starting from July uh, 2013. And uh, this uh, draft was stopped uh, with the formulation that favor uh, to use plastic bags and other packages referred to bill number 2353. Uh, will stop most industries of Ukraine goods and industrial products, will freeze trading operation and will not allow to import and export goods and packaged products. Uh, the biggest social uh, organization, two social organizations, uh, signed this uh, stop, this uh, fail. Uh, that was Ukrainian packaging and environmental uh, coalition and club of packers uh, that is community non-commercial organization and includes more than 80 manufacturers and users of packaging materials and equipment and others organizations. I will speak later about what to do, what we have to do. So uh, I would like to stop a little bit about the, res uh, about the research in the field. So the most well-known research, uh, research and development organizations in the field of bioplastics are the uh, two, both organizations that I have already presented and some others from the Academy of Science and from Ministry of Education, which are trying to work with bioplastic without, let's say, some financial support. Uh, then uh, we have uh, such in Ukraine, uh, one, but rather big and very important state organization, Ukur uh, Eco Resource. Uh, that is a state organization uh, that is under uh, Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources of Ukraine and Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine. The main government, uh, that is the main governmental organization that is 
uh, to increase collection, recycling and disposal of waste as secondary raw materials according to the law on basic principles of the state environmental policy of Ukraine for the period till 2020. Uh, this uh, state organization works, uh, but again, because of the financial some problems, uh, they, they are very, very, very slowly. Uh, mostly people there, they are interested in some uh, bioplastic uh, movement direction and so on. But again, so during that project that I have already said, uh, we worked with this organization. <coughs> they really, they were interested in the results of uh, this project, but again, uh, financial stops, financial barriers. And also we have uh, some enterprises that uh, produce uh, bioplastics. Um, let's say I showed here some general samples which uh, show the general uh, direction of bioplastics mainly. For example, uh, the biggest organization on plastics in Ukraine is Ukroplastic. Uh, they have just projects, several projects on bioplastics. They are working on bioplastics. But that's all. They don't produce them. They just work on bioplastics, inventing and so on and so on. Then uh, two organizations, uh, similar directions on bioplastics, that is Bioplastic and Ligoil. Uh, they work with modification of uh, traditional polyethylene, polypropylene and polystyrol with different additives. Bioplastic with uh, TDPA of Epi company and Ligoil is uh, uh, with uh, additive of Symphony Environmental uh, of from United uh, Kingdom. So they just mix in mini extruders these additives, produce uh, polyethylene, and they say that it biodegrades. But uh, on the web pages of this organization, I found that they okay. They say that they uh, they have this STMA uh, standard, but at the same time they wrote that uh, this um, type of biodegradation is not improved in the Europe. I, we have this information, but uh, we can't even check if, if it is true. So then uh, we have such uh, organization, Rosen Park, a uh, big organization from the west of Ukraine. Uh, they, uh, produce, uh, bio, uh, they produce plastic packages for several big organizations such as Nestle, uh, Maxima, Baskin Robbins, Santa Bremer, uh, the uh, products which are uh, produced in Ukraine. I mean. And uh, they have already finished uh, the project with uh, PLA. They tried to work with PLA and they succeed. But the problem was when they came to the industry, I don't know which one, but some of them maybe, and they said we have uh, the bioplastics for packaging. Please, we can sell them instead of standard uh, traditional plastics. But the price was very surprisingly, okay, two, three times more than uh, traditional plastics. So they uh, failed with this proposition and they continue to produce only uh, traditional plastic packages. But they have the results and they have this uh, PLA uh, bioplastic. <laughs> Then several uh, organizations like Pentalac and Biopolitech, they produce, um, they say they, they produce uh, bioplastics from, uh, uh, from here, from recycling, recycled natural plant oil and for, from uh, exopolysaccharides. Just information from the websites that we found. Uh, for sure, I can say that uh, some uh, markets and big shops sell, like in Egypt, uh, Carrefour Egypt, sell uh, the bioplastic uh, packages uh, in Ukraine, that is for sure Bio and maybe Ashan. So the, 
the perspectives. The perspectives are like here I painted is rather ghostly now, but we believe in a good future. But I would like to, to say with this I, with this um, page, maybe I can answer to the uh, question of uh, Gerhard uh, Brownek, uh, especially after the presentation of Eric Follet. Uh, where to find the raw material base. We have the raw material base. We, uh, Ukraine is the biggest uh, country in the Europe. We have perfect, the most, the best uh, ground all over the world. And because of that, in 2013, we, have, we got 63 million tons of cereals, 11 million tons of sunflower, and potatoes, and so on, so on, so on. So we, we have the raw materials base. And also we, uh, uh, we have uh, experienced staff and manufacture of traditional plastics. So combining this, we can, let's say, propose something to Europe. What to do next? Uh, that is, let's say, some plan for us, for Ukrainians. Um, hopefully with, with support of Europe to move to bioplastic. So, first of all, uh, it has to be a state and regional support of bioplastic manufacturers and consumers. Absolutely. So just I will read what we have to do. So the next uh, point is re low regulation. There is no re low regulation as I showed. This law, the draft of law, was stopped and until now nothing done, uh, did, uh, done, have been done. I don't know how to, 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 to say because or it is still moving or it is stopped at all. Uh, then tax benefits or some other economical stimulus for bioplastic manufacturers and consumers. Uh, governmental support of research and development activities and power production of bioplastics. Then, uh, not, I'm not the first one who is saying, who is saying this. Preparedness and uh, willingness of society for waste dividing and presence of infrastructures for dividing waste collection. And the, the last point is systematic cooperation and coordination of government, society, research and development organization and uh, enterprises. And in this point, we see the role of national information point. So what, uh, what I mean? Ukraine moves to Europe. Hopefully we will, sometime we will come to Europe. And when the government of Ukraine will come to Europe and say, we want to be in Europe, Europe will, will say, okay, hopefully. Hopefully we will say, okay. But you have to move to European Union standards. Governments will say, okay, and will put all the responsibility to the enterprises. Enterprises, unready enterprises, let's say, will, will be scared and will find the way to solve this directive of the government. And here we can help to the enterprises. We will ask you, how did you transfer your uh, enterprises to the standards? Hopefully you will help us. And then we will help to all three um, actors on, in the field, mainly government, enterprise, research and development, to find each other and to help each other to, to, to move with the idea to move to the European standards. So I can see that uh, uh, the role of national information points, point in Ukraine is information for all actors in the field, coordination of their work, dissemination of the information, project management, if we will have some European projects, can be uh, for sure that, uh, from our side it will join and government organization and enterprises and research and development. Uh, as I showed you, uh, we have them all. Then knowledge, sorry, knowledge transfer uh, from you, from them, between them, 
support of them, and so on and so on, what they will need from us. So thank you for your attention and for the possibility to be here.